Just how unfathomably petrified are you by the Ebola virus? It could be coming here, according to your morning newspapers, with its bleeding from every orifice and its almost certain death for whoever is uh, so unwitting as to catch it. Or are we worrying ourselves over here uh, about a non-existent threat or a very, very low threat indeed? And is the real problem actually in Africa? If, if you look at the, at the sort of uh, at the things which kill us as human beings, then Ebola is a worry, obviously, but it's nowhere near in the same league as malaria. In the, in the same, what is it about Ebola which grabs hold of the Western reader or viewer? Do you think? I think with Ebola, I think um, the contagion factor is, is a big one. And actually there are a lot of myths about how contagious it is, um, propagated probably by pop culture. People get, get the disease at funerals because when the, the, the disease takes over the body and kills its host, it, the body becomes very, very contagious. So when people are preparing the body for burial without taking the necessary precautions, they're having the funeral, which often involves eating a meal in the presence of the body, touching the body, hugging, kissing potentially the body, and that puts those people at, at, at high risk as well. Of course, you get an outbreak like this, and Medicine Sans Frontier are absolutely overwhelmed with work. Uh, they don't have the resources to do everything that they want to do. It's just almost impossible. They need a bit of help. How many people have been killed? By so, them? so far there's 672 deaths. Um, Across the various countries Across from Guinea countries, through to... Yeah. Exactly. Um, and and one, over 1,200 confirmed cases. But, but one, one story I do want to tell you is that there is one site in Guinea where we managed to reduce the death rate to 25%. And we managed to do that because the community were extremely receptive to the health messaging that we were giving them, basically. And they were bringing their patients in early. And it, the earlier we treat people, the earlier we give them the rehydration, the nutritional support they need, the better their chances are of survival. Which goes to show how important um, not just the treatment itself is, but the rest of the package, the which is gamut. about communicating with communities, <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, reducing their fear levels, because as you've mentioned already, people are very afraid of this disease. You know, we're talking often about remote communities. They see health workers coming in and all this protective equipment, taking away their relatives and their relatives don't necessarily come back. There's all sorts of rumors and conspiracy theories circulating. Well, including that you lot are responsible for it, or at least us lot, we whiteies. Yes, it, exactly, yes. The, exactly. There are, there are rumors like that going around. Front page news over here, of course, is is Ebola in Britain? When will Ebola come to Britain? How many of us will die? This is, uh, there's something a bit ludicrous about this. I wouldn't say it's ludicrous. I mean, as you said, this is a, this is a, a disease it's a that people disease. are, yes. exactly, and it is, it, it is highly contagious. Um, but the, there is a minimal risk of it spreading to the UK. I mean, the, I think the, the health authorities are right, of course, to be prepared. However, the best preparedness we can do, the most effective way of minimizing the risk for the UK is ensuring that the response in West Africa is as effective as possible. And we need more resources dedicated to that in order to ensure that it's as effective as possible. Thank you.